Right, before lunch, our last speaker is talking about data virtualization as part of a big data strategy. Mr. Shusan Kumar is well known for skills like creating a uh, content marketing uh, program, also product positioning, planning a demand generation and brand awareness campaigns and providing sales uh, enablement capabilities for B2B SAS based product and services. Uh, as a product marketing manager with Zykus, is that correct? Zykus, okay. Zykus B2B SAS based procurement software, Sushan was primarily responsible for all inbound and outbound marketing activities and developing the Zykus for finance product uh, positioning and messaging, creating a content marketing program for the business vertical and planning and executing the annual demand generation strategy. What else? Prior to his MBA, uh, he worked as a business intelligence con consultant for close to six years with multinational companies such as Accenture and Headstrong. Ladies and gentlemen, a product marketing manager of Donodo, Mr. Shusan Kumar. So how to go about it? That's that was the that was the deal. But before that, uh, I would just like to take you through some of the challenges which most modern enterprises they face when they embark upon their uh, big data journey. As you can see, uh, there are just too many types of data. Uh, there are too many uh, data formats. Uh, there are uh, too many skills involved. Um, and it's, it's just everything related to big data is extremely complex. Uh, so data storage is, is, one part of the, is one part of the puzzle, uh, which is relatively easy to solve. And data analysis is the other part of the puzzle. Uh, that, is, uh, that is where most of the enterprises, they get stuck. Because the data coming in is of uh, both structured and unstructured format. Uh, and for any business to extract insights out of them, they need to combine data from all of these sources. Uh, and that is where most of the enterprises default. So this is usually uh, the modern day data architecture for any enterprise. Uh, there are too many systems over here. Uh, there are too many systems, uh, the source system, there are too many consuming applications. And uh, data from one side to another, there is a direct link. So if the back end goes down, the front end also goes down. The businesses, the business user groups, they want data at a very fast rate. 
uh, the sooner they get data, the, the, the better it is because that is when uh, they will be able to extract insights out of it and uh, essentially that will affect their time to market. But in case there is a downtime, uh, all of that just goes for a toss. And that is one challenge uh, which even with the latest uh, data storage solutions or data analysis solutions, most companies, they still cannot overcome that challenge. So in a very recent study, uh, Gartner came up with this uh, uh, stat saying 80% of the data lake uh, projects will fail to deliver. Uh, and you know, when it comes to big data solutions, most companies, the first thing that they actually go for is, is having a data lake, uh, which essentially acts as a storage for all big data solutions. Uh, and although uh, that, is, that is good to, to store, all, all, all the unstructured data, but that is just not good enough when it comes to uh, other data management capabilities. So this, uh, the figure on the right, as you can see, that is, uh, that is Forrester's conceptual model of uh, a big data fabric. What you see at the center of this figure is, is uh, two Hadoop clusters powered by a Spark engine. So uh, a big data fabric, essentially, uh, so you need the Hadoop clusters, uh, which actually act as uh, your data lake or, uh, or your data storage solution. But for it to work, you actually need a data ingestion layer. Uh, you can see uh, the bottommost uh, layer. Uh, to load data into Hadoop uh, or your data lake, you need a data discovery uh, layer uh, for users to find data. Uh, what they're looking for, you want a data access layer uh, for them to you know, access all the data that is available to them, and you need a data orchestration layer uh, for them, for uh, for the analytics teams uh, to to integrate that data and to perform transformations of uh, on it, so that they can prepare it and they can consume it uh, for their own analytic uh, algorithms. And at the same time, you also need data management capabilities like uh, data governance and security, which is which should be interwoven into all of these layers uh, to enable governance and security. data fabric. Now this is data virtualization. Uh, this, the capabilities which data virtualization supports is very much similar to what you would expect from a big data fabric. Uh, as you can see, the virtual layer is, it lies between your source systems at the bottom and your consuming applications on top. Uh, the, this virtual layer essentially, uh, uh, it provides you uh, with capabilities such as data integration without uh, data replication or relocation because when it comes to da when it comes to data data integration uh, most of the technologies or, or rather the most prominent technology that we are uh, we are aware of is ETL uh, which essentially involves moving data from from one source system to another source system uh, or sorry uh, from one source system to the target system uh, in this case uh, the using data virtualization uh, uh, companies can integrate all the data without actually replicating or moving that data from one storage space to another storage space. Uh, it provides uh, a data access layer for all the users uh, on top uh, or the consuming applications to access all the data that is available to them. Uh, there, is, uh, there is a metadata management system which uh, enables data governance and privacy. Uh, there is a data cataloging which helps uh, with use cases such as self-service uh, and uh, with data discovery and all of these capabilities essentially combine to deliver data to the users in the format they will, that they want. This, uh, you can see this is the architecture diagram for our data virtualization platform. Uh, it has three stages. Uh, one connect, second is combine, and third is consume. Uh, in, in the first stage, uh, at the bottom of the, of the diagram in green, as you can see, uh, the data virtualization platform can connect with all different kinds of sources, whether it is uh, data warehouses, uh, all sorts of prominent databases, uh, flat files, NoSQL databases, uh, cloud and SaaS applications, etc. 
uh, all of this data uh, and, and the data virtualization platform comes uh, with its own set of connectors to each one of these sources. So uh, all of this data, the, essentially the metadata gets stored in the virtual layer, the data doesn't really move uh, from where it is. Uh, and within the virtual layer, that is where you apply all sorts of uh, data integration and, and transformations. And uh, you prepare that data uh, for the consuming application sitting on top. Uh, and these consuming applications can be, uh, can be reporting tools such as Power BI, Tableau, ClickView, or, or enterprise applications, uh, or portals, etc. Uh, so it essentially uh, simplifies this entire uh, data integration process. And the users on, on both the sides, so, so there are business users on one side and, and, the, uh, and the source systems on the other side, they don't really uh, have to connect with each other now because the data virtualization there, it essentially acts as a single repository uh, for all the enterprise data. So coming back to the Caterpillar case study, uh, when they wanted to implement the predictive maintenance program, uh, the way to go about it was, uh, the way they went about it was by investing heavily uh, in sensors and uh, big data technologies. So in this diagram, you can see uh, the sensor data, which is essentially, uh, which is streamed on an hourly basis, that gets stored in the Hadoop cluster. And, sorry, yeah. So the sensor data coming in from OSI PI gets stored in the Hadoop cluster, but the sensor data or the streaming data in it on itself is not really useful. Uh, for you to, for, for, the, for any company to understand uh, or to rather gain insight from that, you need to mix that data with other, uh, other parts of data, which is essentially the data related to the inventory, uh, the service history of those equipments, and uh, all of that integration essentially took place in the virtualization layer, and uh, that was the resulting set was actually uh, fed into Tableau, which was the reporting solution. Uh, this is how uh, as a Caterpillar simplified its entire predictive maintenance program and was able to improve asset performance uh, and implement the predictive maintenance uh, in the program for the company. These are the other two use cases uh, for data lakes. Uh, on the left side, we have got IoT integration. Uh, so we have got uh, the, the streaming data uh, coming in from different, uh, coming in from variables or, or uh, different appliances. All of that streaming data gets stored uh, in the Hadoop cluster. Then we have got uh, other applications, uh, enterprise applications such as the CRM uh, and ERP and, and their databases. All of that data uh, gets integrated in the virtual platform uh, and uh, the consuming applications can be of any type. It could be, uh, uh, it could be reporting solutions such as Tableau or Power BI or uh, the, the resulting data set needs to be fed uh, for any uh, data analytics program uh, run by R or Python or any other language. The second one uh, is the data warehouse uh, offloading. So uh, an enterprise uh, which has got uh, a data warehouse where all the relational data or all the structured data is stored, and then we have got Hadoop where uh, all the unstructured data is stored. Uh, the data virtualization platform in this case essentially uh, uh, presents a unified view for, for the entire enterprise data, uh, and th th which can actually be uh, uh, used by uh, by the uh, by the business user groups uh, through one or the other uh, through through a very uh, regular uh, SQL engine and without uh, and, and the analytical uh, and the data analytics uh, people or the data scientists they don't really have to learn another language to 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 integrate that data or to access that data they can focus on on their core skills um, and this greatly uh, not just it simplifies. Uh, the entire uh, data analytics program, but it also uh, does it at a speed uh, which uh, is unheard of in, uh, in the data integration space. <laughs> These, uh, as you can see, so uh, to summarize uh, it all, we have uh, using data virtualization platforms, companies, uh, uh, you can achieve, uh, it has 80% uh, or more faster time to value. Uh, the ROI realization is within six months with the flexibility to adjust to unforeseen changes. Uh, in a lot of cases, uh, you know, when your source system changes, uh, your entire ETL process or, or the data integration uh, plan over there, that also needs to change. But uh, with the help of data virtualization platform, 
that doesn't need to happen anymore. Uh, we can uh, keep on adding or removing sources or, or uh, just changing the entire source systems and, and the entire ETL process still remains the same. Uh, all of this data is actually uh, made available to the business user groups in, in near real time. Uh, it enables uh, uh, self-service, security and governance uh, in one integrated platform. Uh, and enterprises can actually, uh, they get one single point of contact for their entire enterprise data. This is a brief snapshot of some of our clients. Uh, they are from all various industries, um, all, all the way from manufacturing, banking, finance, and government. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, visit our booth, and I'll be, handled, uh, I'll be more than happy to answer all of your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, that would be a you, you used 15 minutes, so very good. Um, I believe he's in our panel for later, Daniel. So we'll see you again, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are going to come back to talk about a person who went to Machu Picchu with AI. Who could that be? We'll find out after lunch.